Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and today I am joined by Becca Bjorki. Welcome, Becca. How's it going? Good morning. It's going pretty well. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to have you here. Your work is unbelievable. Becca is an incredible digital artist creating these fantastic fantasy worlds and all you all of you know that I am super into that so I'm very excited for this stream today and to learn from Becca welcome everyone into the chat nice to see you all here welcome on Behance and YouTube um, just a few quick reminders real quick to start your day off uh, if you missed any of our previous streams you can always watch the replay on Behance or YouTube at any time and those are in available uh, from all the way back to all the way in the future so anytime you want to learn a little something it's there for you. And be sure to check out Brush Hour with Adobe Evangelist Kyle Webster. This week, Kyle covered how to paint hair in Photoshop and Fresco, which is a very important thing. I know many of us struggle with that. Also, don't forget to check out the Adobe Express streams right before this stream. You can tune in and learn how to implement our easy to use app into your workflow. This is something that I use all the time for stories or Instagram posts, and it's honestly been a game changer in my own workflow. So highly recommend checking that out, but I won't waste any more time today because I am super excited to see what you have in store for us, Becca. And uh, yeah, let's uh, hear a little introduction. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Becky Bjorki. I am a digital artist, as Anna so aptly described me already. I kind of got my start and found my footing in photography, and it's been this evolution since then, especially in the last like two years or so. Um, so now I mostly work as a kind of digital illustrator, mixed media artist. Um, I do a lot of concept art. Um, and yeah, I like monsters. I like fantasy. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's my shtick. I love going places that don't really exist. And uh, take a look at some of my stuff here uh i love characters um like especially coming from photography like i love a face i love a person and what you can find out about them just by looking at them and exploring you know what it who they are and what they look like and how do you get that point across through art um again monsters everywhere yes. and a lot of environments and stuff too which oh, has been I love super these. fun. Oh, I love Thank them. you. So something like this is kind of what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at a uh, mixing some media and making some cool environment art today. Amazing. I am so inspired already. I can't wait to see what you create today. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. I'm excited to make something and uh, hopefully I won't embarrass myself too badly. I encourage oh, everyone no. to laugh if I do. <laughs> I'm sure you will do great. Yeah. I would love to know what are some of your biggest inspirations? I mean, you can see so many things that remind me of stuff throughout your portfolio. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm really big on a kind of this concept of like di divergent thought and mm. uh, trying to pull ideas and different ideas, divergent ideas from as many different outlets as possible um, for general inspiration though i really really love reading uh as you guys can see back here yes, um, same <laughs> yes thank you after my own heart i mean like I, I love to read and i think it's very creatively kind of freeing uh to read especially novels or even nonfiction, and generate ideas within your own head uh without having the input from other artists um i think it's really easy to like go and search for the kind of art that you like want to make right and you want to look at these other artists and you love what they do and then you kind of pigeon your hole yourself into this little tiny niche trying to be someone else but if you take yourself out of that visual input and allow yourself just to kind of free think i think that does a lot for inspiration um oh, I but i love that yeah overall fantasy though fantasy is my jam because it's it's universal and it lets you you know relate to ideas without them being explicitly close and realistic yeah. and so anything fantastical is where i want to be so cool. Yeah. And I love your advice about taking yourself away from the other art that you see and having some time to look inward or look at books and stuff. And that's so helpful. I think many times you're right. We pigeonhole ourselves into these areas of trying to be something we're not and not letting ourselves create freely. So totally perfect way to start the stream because I think you're going to fully create freely today. I hope so. <laughs> awesome. So tell me when tell me when to go oh yeah go ahead it's, it's you're you're in the driver's seat 
I'm in the driver's seat. All right. <laughs> Dangerous. So <laughs> this is uh, kind of what we're going to be looking at today. We are going to be looking at taking something like this, which was rendered in 3D, and turning it into something a little more like this. So wow. yeah, it'll go pretty quick. I think I think we can fit the whole thing in. Um, but I, I, I know so many people are interested in kind of getting into 3D and it's intimidating. It's a lot. Like you open up 3D program for the first time and it's like, what what is this? There's all these numbers and these windows and I don't know what I'm doing. And I think utilizing it in a really basic way like this, where you can create this kind of dimensional value sketch, like almost like a thumbnail, right? Uh, without needing to understand texture or anything like that, or how to build materials and just establish your light and your shape and your perspective is really, really gonna elevate um, compositing. Cause if, if you're not like a trained illustrator or something, you don't really know how to draw, like it can be really hard sometimes when you're just working with photo assets. Um, so we're gonna start here and I have a couple different passes, uh, which are versions of the render. Um, so this is our basic gray box. Um, I've also got a depth pass to help create atmosphere. And this clown pass we're going to come back to a lot because um, it's going to make things really easy to make selections without having to go in mm -hmm. with your lasso or your pen tool or anything there. Uh -huh. So let's, uh, let's get started, shall we? And what 3D program are you using? Uh, this, this was built in Blender. Um, okay, cool. And I mean, but you can use anything. You can use SketchUp for really basic kind of oh, boxes. Yeah. Um, you, I was playing with the the Substance Builder beta the other day too that Adobe has out, um, which was really slick. And so you could like literally you don't need anything complex. Like you can just build these really basic shapes, put some cubes, some triangles, some spheres, a flat plane, and that can be your base to build off of. Mm, um, cool. So we're gonna just pull this background down here. And I'm not going to use a ton of assets today because I don't think we really need them. I'm going to be reusing a lot of stuff. So when picking things out, like the lighting, I think is always going to be number one if you're using stock or shooting your own stock or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, just really focusing on that lighting. Uh, we are going to do some light painting in a little bit. But the closer you can get from the beginning, I think is gonna make the work go so much faster. Is there a reason you're doing it in this format um, and size wise? Are you just kind of doing it based on the uh, um, castle background? Um, So I feel like I kind of have this like, exaggerated widescreen problem um <laughs> it's like, you know, like i started you know like oh yeah i like a 16 by 9 and then like hey let's go a little bit wider let's do a 21 by 9 and um so when i first was kind of mocking up what i wanted to do here it started a a little bit um less wide uh but i wanted i wanted more i wanted more so we can get this yes. really big sense of scale here all right I so i'm just that duplicating this background layer literally the same picture twice doesn't matter um and now i want to kind of get rid of these uh high like high hot spots here and i'm just going to make a new layer and set it to darken i'm just gonna start sampling with the clone stamp some more brushes or bushes and trees and stuff but it's okay if it's gonna be a little bit messy because I know I'm going to come in, I'm going to fill this all with more stuff. So I just want to get rid of all this sky. And really just focus the light coming in down here when we get there. And you're using a tablet to do this, right? Right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just use my mouse. Okay. Um, I do have my handy dandy tablet over here. And, and do uh, you usually, I'm sure we'll get into this, but you usually use that for painting and your mouse for kind of the initial work? Yeah, I mean, it bounce back and forth. It kind of okay. depends. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with a mouse. Uh, I know like many people, I never took the dive to buying a tablet uh, until well into art making. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it happens, right? And. Uh, Getting am, it like, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm in the same boat. I actually have one coming in the mail today because everyone <laughs> was making fun of me on the last stream. So, 
I think actually when I was watching some of the the previous streams, um, someone mentioned something about that to you that you were using a mouse and yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean like it it works right. Yeah. All right, so we've got that all kind of filled in, and I just want to shape the light here a little bit. I'm just gonna use some curves. Um, Sam is wondering how long the initial 3D process usually takes you for an image. Um, so for something like this, a couple minutes, literally oh. a couple minutes, um, so fast. And like, that's why I wanted to kind of use this example, um, just because it's super beginner friendly. Um, so th these are um, some pre-made models here uh, that have some shape to them. But again, literally, they could just be like boxes mm. and you can get more or less that same effect. Um, so just make your shapes, drop your plane in, position your camera, put your light in, do your render, 10 minutes maybe. Um, super, cool. super easy. So I'm just brushing some of that lightness off here to create kind of, kind of a vignette. And I'm gonna drop in a little bit of atmosphere here. Actually, oops. I'm just going to kind of sample one of these greens in here and drop in solid color layer. We're going to have a lot of layers, a lot, a lot of layers. <laughs> and I like to use just like solid colors for atmosphere because that atmosphere does have substance and volume to it. And so it's going to feel a little bit more real because that atmosphere is interacting with the lights going on. So I'm just kind of brushing that back in on a mask on that layer a little. Too much. Yeah. And one more kind of warmer one. Invert that mask. A little too warm. I'm going to go into these layer properties and I'm going to do this on so many layers. Um, I love blend if for everything. Yes. Um, and I just want to pull that that orange warmth kind of out of that highlight because those highlights are still going to be kind of blown out a little bit. But then the, the warmth is going to be showing up over anything that's a little bit darker. And, uh, oh, I guess I didn't show you guys this, but just kind of where we're going today. Mm. This is the world's ugliest mood board. Um, no, that's so cool to see, though. <laughs> that's really helpful. Yeah. And I, 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 looking at reference is probably step number one after the idea comes. So I want to kind of catch this, like, golden morning light and still have these, like, lush greens and, you know, a little bit of that warmth kind of coming through in the shadows afterwards. And our end product here, I want it to feel kind of like one of these German castles. So I've, I've been thinking about um, the frog prince and kind of, we're gonna take a twist on that story a little bit. Yes. And uh, so there's a stump in my yard, which is nice, the lasso. It looks kind of like this. Um, and my kids have decided that that's uh, where the fairies live. <laughs> it's a fairy castle. And so I was thinking, all right, well, if we have a frog prince or princess, where would they live? That's so cool. Mm -hmm. That that must be such a great way to get inspiration too from kids and their their wild imaginations. Totally, totally. And I was a, a really young parent, um, like an 18 year old parent. And so I've had this like childhood wonder to kind of shape like most of my adult artistic career and it's hard but it also allows that, you know, that extra sense of creativity right they have the most yeah. out there kind of ideas um but so since it's a Grimm's fairy tale from Germany I wanted to kind of echo that German castle shape and now we're gonna make it out of wood so uh quick question for you from yeah. Kate uh how do you determine your palette your color how do palette? I determine my palette that is going to depend a lot on um, what the story needs. And uh, so some stories are gonna need to feel darker. Some are gonna feel a little bit happier. Um, as we build out this environment, um, I do wanna kind of juxtapo juxtapose 
um, some of these these warmer, happier, magical kind of greens with some stuff that's a little bit darker as we develop the story there. So it it really depends on your understanding of color theory and like what is necessary to the greater story that you want to tell. Cool. All right. So I'm going to make a copy actually of all these render passes because now we're going to start using this one for selections. And I have this log and we're going to set this over to soft light. I think we're going to start, we'll start with this chunk right here. I'm just going to drop that onto a layer mask and unlink it so I can move this wood around. And, uh, we're going to do this a couple times. And I label everything because otherwise I get lost in my 500 layers. So yes. <laughs> I could imagine with something there like are this. So many. Okay. And so like this is like I I cannot emphasize enough how much I love being able to make selections like this when using 3D. Um because if we we're just doing this with photos, the amount of time that would go into the masking and the cutting yeah. and shaping, like, no, thank you. Whoops. And so the the clown pass that you did, is that something that you can set up in 3D? I, I'm not as mm -hmm. familiar with 3D, so. Yeah, yeah. So okay. different passes are basically different. Um, I guess we can call them like ways of pulling different information out of the scene that you've created in 3D. So what this clown pass does is um, I have it set up to put a different color on every different object. Mm, so we have okay. that that many objects, however many there are, eight or something. Um, and so it makes selections super, super easy. And, you know, I actually think I want to add this part this guy over here so we're just gonna add that to the mask and worth noting too so i dropped another copy of the the render in this um castle group also just so if I want to change the shape or do anything there, I can do that all within another mask, masks on masks on masks uh, mm -hmm. later. Okay. And I'm not worried too much right now about um, like distorting the pixels or anything with changing these i am gonna use probably a bunch of smart layers or smart objects in a bit as well but i have the way i'm going to treat this at the end i think um it won't really matter if there's any pixel distortion or destructive stuff going on i'm not too worried about it Super cool already. Getting there. Speed. I feel like when I'm working with clients, having to be able to get things done really fast is super important. And I would love to just spend like weeks and weeks or months and months uh, slowly developing things like I do with personal work. But yep. <laughs> real life has to come and ruin everything. So are you working with a lot of clients to do, like, I imagine this as book covers and advertisements and that kind of thing, or? Yeah, yeah, I do do book covers. Um, again, mostly, um, most of my work recently has been uh, concept art. A um, uh, couple indie productions in the last couple of years, some not so indie productions. And 
yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really gotten into advertising. I'm not opposed to it. Um, but I, I love the creative freedom that comes with like working with writers and directors and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and it, I like feeding off each other's creative energy and like really developing an idea. I yeah. think is just like the best, the best job I could possibly have. And I love it. Yeah. It's super cool to collaborate in that way and get like new ideas and be like, oh, that's so cool. And then if we added this and this. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. And like, that's like how, again, like finding those, that kind of exposure therapy to different ideas and letting something develop more organically uh, with all these different perspectives is just, I love it. All right, yes. so I'm gonna do a little color matching here with curves. Just to kind of start matching things. Um, no. And so the way I did this, if you select the curves options here and you come down to auto options and go to your find light and dark colors, you can start sampling your shadow, midtone, and highlight colors there. And I love that for color matching. Um, I think I actually want to take down some of the yellows in that uh, original wood there. Okay. Groups on groups on groups on groups. <laughs> All right. So we're going to look at this original render again real quick. And I am going to use channels to select the shadows. Um, so I'm just going to have any of these channels over here. I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to control L and open our levels. And just start exaggerating kind of where those shadows are. So I can drop that selection then on top of the overlay we just put in there. Just hit control, click that little thumbnail. It selects everything white. And more curves. Now that selection's over there, I'm gonna invert it. So the shadows are white. color it's hideous <laughs> molly said i've loved watching your art evolve thank you molly i've kind of liked it too it's kind of been fun yeah it's always so fun <laughs> to like look at how you continue to change and grow as an artist and then look back at older work and be like hmm well, I've learned a lot, but also, what was I thinking? <laughs> right? Do you have that where you're looking at your old stuff and you're just like, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. This exists for other people to look at. <laughs> yes. And every once in a while, I'll go back and re-archive things from uh, Instagram and be like, oh, my God. And then sometimes I like for people to see the journey, but also I'm like, how much do I want them to see? <laughs> what do they need to know? <laughs> I mean, I think there's really something to be said about candor yeah to i mean like knowing like when you're a younger artist or like starting out oh, nope not quite that much um i don't know i feel like you, you kind of put your like idol sort of on this pedestal right you don't don't realize they're just people and then it's yep. like as you become more developed you like realize oh we all are just kind of like winging it and so so true we've all made bad things <laughs> <laughs> probably recently yep <laughs> all right so we're Let's keep that for now. I think that's all right for right now. And now I want to kind of start bringing in some detail. All right, so this is just plain piece of gold something. And I'll drop this in here. Covers are out. So. Invert that. Now, so I'm actually going to turn the wood off here. And I'm just going to come in with a chalk brush because it's my favorite. Start kind of going over some of these edges. And this is going to look really weird at first, but I promise it will look less weird later. So that was just a, a color layer with some texture? Yeah, it's just okay. a 
gold, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gold something. Um, just to give it a little bit of texture without having to go in and manually do that. So I'm just gonna go on over these edges. Molly said, I don't think you've ever made anything bad. You crazy. And isn't all art good art for the most part anyways? Ooh, fight me, Molly. Yeah. Some good food for thought. That is true. All art is good art in some way. It's all just in the eye of the beholder, right? <laughs> totally. I mean, it's so subjective, right? I'm like, yep. I'm sure a lot of people, like, especially like photographers, I know I've heard this from a lot. Like you make something or you like shoot something for your clients, right? And you like show them some proofs and... The stuff that you like didn't even want them to see at all end up being their favorite shots. And yes. if that's what they want, then who cares? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and you're like, no. Really depends like on the person you're working with too. Like, are they open to listening to yeah. what you have to say? And then you're like, I really don't want my name to be associated with this. So you can use it, but just don't tell anyone it's by me. <laughs> right. I yeah, absolutely have had those. <laughs> but I don't know, it's kind of the the joy of working with other people too, is just like knowing that you gave them something they want. Yeah. And that has to take precedence sometimes over your own ego. That is so true. Which is hard, like when you're so emotionally invested in your art, like, I know I make art because I love art, not because I think I'm going to be rich because that's not going to happen. Um, hey, you never know. I mean, I won't say no if someone wants to send me a million dollars. But uh, <laughs> Anyone in the chat want to send Becca a million dollars today? I will accept your generosity. <laughs> um, but I mean, even if, even if it wasn't my job, like I would go and make art all the time anyway, just because it's how I understand the world. It's how I can communicate with other people. I 100% agree. I feel it's like ev even times when I'm feeling low on ideas or don't have any jobs coming in or whatever, it's like I have to make art in some way, whether it's on the computer or with my hands creating something or just sketching. It's like in for many of us, it's like built into our DNA. Totally, totally. And like that, that's one thing that's so fun about like mixing media too, is that it's like, okay, well, I don't have to rely on my camera or I don't have to rely on my computer or whatever it is. I don't have to rely on an easel and canvas and everything there. Like I can find a way to make something compulsively. Yep. No matter what. A hundred percent. So this is still pretty quick and dirty and repetitive. Um, and I'm gonna mask that off. So just ignore how ugly that is. So this is gonna be probably the most time consuming part of this process more than all the, all the environment parts. Now, using 3D, should anyone feel so inspired to go get their hands dirty and start learning something new? Obviously, you can create your materials in 3D. Mm, and true. To mask that, which does, yes, make things go faster. It can definitely add a really fantastic sense of realism. Um, but I think, you know, if, as you're going through that process of learning about everything that makes 3D art possible, starting without textures is a completely reasonable and viable thing to do. And how long have you been using 3D in your workflow? Honestly, not that long. Um, I guess maybe like two-ish year, three years. Okay. What year is it? Where are we? Um, um, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> like kind of like oh, yeah. right before, yeah, 20, 2019, I think it's kind of. Okay when I started and I had this like completely sort of like neurotic thing. I've, I've been like dragging my feet for years about wanting to learn 3D. And um, I'd like opened Blender and been like, nope, 
Yep. <laughs> nope, I have two brain cells and they are not for this. And um, I finally was like, you know what? No, I need to do this. And uh, I like stayed up for like an entire night and an entire day and taught myself Blender um, to a pretty, you know, usable amount, you know, within a day, as good as you can get at something within that period. And then it was just kind of like this addicting realization that like, oh, I don't have to go on location. I don't have to build a set. I can make my own sets and do whatever I want. Um, and like a couple weeks, couple months later is when I got my first concept art job, um, just based on that kind of like obsessive need to learn really quickly. Wow. And yeah, it was, it was great. And it was really, it was really exciting. I almost didn't even go to the, the first interview, but, uh, cause I was so nervous. I'm like, they want me. But that yeah. is so awesome. It was, it was, and it was just like the rest is history, you know, like, oh, yeah, here's this thing. And I haven't been excited about something like this, you know, in photography in a while. So let's just chase this rabbit and see yes. where it goes. Oh, it's so funny because we have so many similarities. Like I have done the same exact thing with Blender, have opened it multiple times and then closed it and been like, I'm <laughs> right? not doing this. Like this just doesn't work for my brain. And so I always ask my brother to make things for me and then let me use them. But it start. I know I'm starting to pester him too much with it. And so <laughs> I'm like, I just need to learn it. And so I did a beginner's course and I got um, fairly familiar with it and then dropped it for like three months. And now I opened it the other day and I'm like, I don't know how to add a camera anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's like, it's been a battle, but you're inspiring me to just do it and, and to use these pieces to use in Photoshop. I think that's really cool because I know myself and other artists I've talked to get hung up on the idea that it has to just be made in 3d. No absolutely not um like there's so much i mean even even if you're working like in motion right like motion graphics and like you can utilize 2d or like 2.5d in in film right like it doesn't have to be fully functional real life physics 3d simulation all the time and so when you're just making 2d art like this like there's no reason that it has to be all 3d yeah yeah super cool and you Almost. said this was a model, right? That you yeah. you bought or free or? Uh, these ones I bought, these are from Kitbash 3D. Um, so I originally was just gonna do like some just boxes with some ugly triangles and stuff on top. But I mean, I had the models already, so. Yeah. And, and they're perfect. Super legit, yeah. Yeah, but they're still, I mean, you can see like they're pretty, pretty simple. Um, like they have, you know, some detail down here, but they're not anything totally crazy all right almost done with just painting and painting and painting and painting and then i'm gonna go cover it all up mm -hmm. i mean these same kind of concepts apply to like if you do start with a with a value sketch right just like a black and white and gray right sketch uh just to establish your composition it's the same idea like you can go in over those shapes and bring in those photo textures and i love using photos in general because of like the randomosity they provide so you don't have things that all look the same you know it feels natural Definitely. Well, I'm ready to be done drawing on this. I feel like I get my daily workout like back and forth, back and forth. I and know, right? And, <laughs> and is your tablet the one with the screen? Mm-hmm. That's super nice. Yeah, I had one. I had one that didn't have a screen and I just, I don't know. It's, I couldn't get into it the right way. Like 
just yeah. wasn't working for me. Yeah, I'm honestly very worried about that. <laughs> Yours doesn't have a screen? No, the one I ordered does not. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be weird. But so I connect my iPad to my computer and use my iPad like a tablet. Sure. Um, and uh, and that works well because then I can paint directly on the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, do I need a tablet? This is the internal debate that I have when I see people work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now you have all the toys, so you can change it up. And totally. I've, I've really wanted to, I'm definitely a Windows Android person. And um, I'm so jealous, though, of people who are able to draw on iPad. Like, I want to use iPad programs and sit on my couch and be lazy. Yes, it's really fun. Maybe someday they'll convert me. I have to give props to Adobe for introducing the Curvature Pen Tool because it is the absolute best. Yeah. Yeah. And you're really good at it too. Oh, thank you. I mean, it just, it feels so like intuitive, right? You just kind of follow the shape. But you know, when it does that. Yeah, I definitely hated the Pen Tool for a long time. Uh, just because I didn't know how to make it do what I wanted. Yeah. I feel like it's gotten better, too. It totally and, has. Like, Yeah. yeah it, it really has. And I think many artists, too, um, who've been creating for a long time, remember the old pen tool. <laughs> it was it was not friendly. Um, uh -uh. But a couple updates ago, they, uh, yeah, it has just become my new favorite now. Like, I can't figure out, I don't know what in my brain, um, like the select and mask tool. Every, like I, I watch other people do it and to make their selections and it makes so much sense. And then I go and I try and it just is not happening. So like I'll the one where it brings up the screen and you yeah. can touch. Yeah, it doesn't work for me either. I can't figure it out. Um, so I'll just stay here with my pen tool and have fun by myself I guess yeah I'm with you I think we're about done here all right hideous gold detailing all over our castle here I think I want to just again more and more layers kind of turn down that saturation a little bit and we are going to bring this now into overlay. So we're getting the nice shape and the shadows. Maybe darken it up a little bit. So metal, metal is really tricky. And I think even if you, you know, are a photographer or composite artist and you're not an illustrator, like looking at reference for materials to figure out how they behave is just so essential um just understanding the physics of the world in general especially if you want to go for anything photo real um really really is going to make everything look a lot better definitely so i don't think we need any i'm gonna add a little bit of bloom over this real quick just with like a soft brush And just come in like really, really low flow, just again, soft, soft brush and kind of where that light is sort of hitting. I want to add a little bit of glow there. I am now going to take this whole gold thing we just made. I'm going to duplicate it. And we are going to replace the gold with something else. So more photo textures. We're going to take some moss in here. And paste this in. Rotate it around a little bit. So again, I'm not worried about being destructive with these pixels right now. And I'm gonna copy that mask from the gold. 
right over here. We're going to set this to overlay. You can see it's kind of starting to come together a little bit here. This wood is bothering me. And I want even more moss, but we're going to add in, I think, some more moss. But first, I'm going to pull down the saturation on that as well. Duplicate this layer. This one. And. Whoa. That was mm. not, that was not it. All right, <laughs> inverted mask again. All right, so now we're gonna have some fun with brushes. So I love brushes for texture. Ooh, what is that brush pack that you're using there? This is, I wish I remember where it came from. Um, I think this is from someone on DeviantArt. If it's you, I love you and your brushes. Um, these are just clumps of moss and so we're just going to use that over oh. the photo texture. And there are so many cool brushes out there that anyone can go find. Um, or if you're really motivated, go and make your own. I am not that motivated. No. <laughs> I would rather be sleeping. Um, I do sometimes, though, depending on what I need. But it's a cool way to support other artists, too. Like, yeah. People are out here making stuff. Go keep them their $10 or whatever for their brushes and their actions. It's support funny because community. sometimes I totally forget about brushes for something like this. Like drippy moss i might look up different pngs or try to like paint it in myself and and then it's like oh perfect a uh, hanging moss brush hanging moss brush and we're gonna use another brush too uh let's do so these are the um kyle's concept art brushes from adobe they're like from the adobe website and they are pretty awesome actually uh yeah they're really good. If anyone wants to download them, they are Kyle Webster brushes. They are rad. I use them all the time. And I feel like they're actually unique. Like if you go and like look up like concept art brushes, I feel like you end up like finding the same brushes recycled over and over, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. You know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, these I like, I love the variation and it doesn't have to be like super realistic. Like this brush we're using right now, it's like random drawn leaves kind of layering over each other and it still creates the right effect. So cool. All right. And I think I actually want to add one more thing. I want to add a window to this, uh, into this wood real quick. So I'm just gonna add one more curves layer, clip it down to the wood layer, make it real dark. Break just a simple brush here. So I think I want to actually more blend if I want to take this curves layer kind of off the highlights because I feel like we're getting kind of flat here and I'm always splitting these sliders in half just because if we leave them together it turns into this weird pixelated monstrosity that we do not want so no. all right we're looking better 
Okay, our last piece of our castle here, we're going to add some... Oh, here we go. I'm going to add some roots to it because I want it to feel like it's growing up out of this swamp. So, object selection tool. Also, latest updates have made this amazing. Oh my god. So easy. Yes, big time more things that would take forever. So I'm actually going to make this one into a smart object. Now I'm going to put this down here. And I'm definitely trying to, while I'm doing this, like think about kind of where these pieces of the structure would sort of turn into a root. So we have these like kind of, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see me. Um, these kind of pillars here that are thicker in the model. We've got this kind of slope here. So I want to try to take the roots into the structure. So it looks more organic. Mm. Use the warp tool. I think it's a good start. back with my chalk brush again it's my favorite we're just gonna start painting this away is the chalk brush uh one that's built into photoshop or when you download it uh i think yeah it at least it used to be built into photoshop um i pulled it i have so many brushes like it's kind of grotesque um so i pulled it out of some other group but i'm pretty sure it's built in it's like a very okay. standard brush and i like it because it it has just a little bit of texture to it yeah really nice for blending it looks like yeah yeah especially if you are working with the tablet i mean if i was just using the mouse um I probably just like turn the flow down way low mm. and you can get kind of the same effect. I'm gonna drag this uh... right. Photoshop doesn't like to let me use the warp tool if I have a mask on it. All right. I kind of want to drag this in a little bit more. You can draw a point on your warp tool, which is super cool. And then a little more. How did you drop the point? You hit control if you're on a Windows. If you're on a Mac, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, and you just hold down control and you pick your point. You drop I it in there. Think option on mac or we do have control but maybe option it's probably i think it, most of them it's usually option or something but it just gives you a little more control like almost like you'd have with the puppet warp tool or even mm. like with liquify or something That's a little better we like that mask it's right there and i don't like that so I think I'm going to take a, make a new layer and just come in with the clone stamp and just kind of copy some of this up a little higher. Not a lot, but just a little bit just to kind of extend that a little bit more. All right, cool. And let's get this color matching. We're gonna do it the same way. Click on your curves layer, come down to your auto options. And let's match this. And it's not doing anything because I am very smart. Um, I'm going to group those two different pieces because I have that extra layer for the edge of the log and I was clipped to that so put them in their own group 
Now we've kind of got a little bit of color here, but I think I actually want to get rid of its original color. So we're going to clip a hue saturation layer down there and take that color away. And let's try this again. I'm still, I don't know if you do this, Anna, do you like sit and like undo and redo and undo and redo and click oh, your yeah. layers on and off over and over again? That's how I'm feeling about this wood over the castle right now. Um, I, think I think. Yeah, there's so many times when I'm making something and I'm like, do I like this? Do I not? How does it look better without it? I have to send it to multiple people before I can make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to not do that right now, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, yeah, if I just take more of that yellow out there. Let's... Not, I'm going to just add a blank layer in here. I'm going to set its color. Big soft brush. About an hour in. I'm just gonna sample the color off the wood in the background. I'm just gonna brush it over because I am so lazy. Okay, and we're gonna pull that out of the shadows, go back to blend if, but we're gonna come from that other side and just kind of take it out of the shadows. And maybe go add some more moss to that, but I think we're at a we're at an okay place for now. That's yeah, cool. And if I want to add a little bit more, one more kind of color adjustment layer, layers on layers on layers on layers. <laughs> I don't know how many we're gonna get to. So many. I know. It adds up so quickly. We're just going to do that same thing over and over and over again. My lights are going to be up in this range. Too dark. Okay, so now we're matched a little bit more to the background. Good enough. All right. Let's get some more landscape in here. All right, so I think I want to start with the water. Um, just because that seems to make sense. Then we'll build our way forward. So what I'm going to do with that clown pass again, I'm going to select our water here. And I'm actually going to copy it off the render. Drop that. Oh, of course, not where I want it to be. So now we have mm. a water layer. And what I'm going to do here, water, blue, I'm going to darken this up just so it maintains. We can kind of still see the fall of the light from the original 3D render. This is going to be our backup water underneath what we're going to put on top. So down here. I'm gonna grab some water lilies for our frog kingdom. Yes. I'm gonna bring them right in here. Let's make that a smart object. I'm gonna use distort. I don't wanna kinda. So this photo from an angle already. Um, so I kind of have to figure out in between like where the angle 
of the ground plane would be because I could put like lines or checkerboard pattern or something on it uh, in the render to help, you know, understand like where where your angles and stuff are. But since the photo's from an angle already, it's kind of, we're gonna have to eyeball it a little bit, but I think that's pretty close. And since it's a smart object, if it doesn't work, we can come back and fix it. I'm also gonna just select that water plane there. And I am going to actually, we'll wait on that part. I'm gonna add a mask here, and now we're gonna get some more cool brushes, also from the Kyle pack. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is for grass. We're gonna come in here and we're just gonna start brushing away on this edge. So where did you learn all of this, all of your compositing skills? I would like to thank YouTube University. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's so many places and there's obviously a lot of like really fantastic programs and educators out there. Um, but given the, you know, technology age we live in, uh, there's great stuff out there just on places like YouTube. Um, I will say uh, Noman Academy, very, very high quality content for anyone who's interested. What in is it called? The Noman Academy. Okay. Or the Noman Workshop. Um, so I think like one of the most ground or like worldview changing things for compositing is to look outside of the photography sphere if you've started as a photographer um, and start looking into things like concept art or matte painting uh, or just like starting to learn about um, film and how film is developed and you know how these tools are used that way. And since, you know, if it's outside our general kind of industry, um we don't always know to look for it right and similarly people in other industries aren't labeling things or calling things the same things that you might in whatever industry you work in so just trying to explore and find other resources outside of what you do yeah i think that's such good advice that was a big one i feel like the, the idea of like matte painting as photo composite is like very kind of i don't know buzzwordy on places like YouTube and stuff right now. Mm. Um, but it works. And if anyone doesn't know what matte painting is um, in movie making, uh, uh, you may need to have a sense of uh, set extension. Um, mm. or, you know, some, something to create, you know, a world that isn't built practically. And so you can do that in 3d or you could do it 2d or, you know, old school films, they'd actually like have big actual paintings, you know, on a glass plate or on a mat or something like that, that would then be inserted in front of the camera to create the sense of space. Um, oh, but of wow. course, yeah, it's super, super cool. Um, but so digitally, you know, it involves a lot of environment creation and using things like photos in 3d to create that. Um, cool. let's get our next piece um let's see sam said i feel like becca is more organized with layers than a lot of people and then do you have um a specific system for layer organization um kind of like in in planes um like foreground background midground uh tends to be where i default to I am in general not an organized person. Like I'm a disaster of a person, and um, Same. <laughs> I have to stop myself. Yeah, it's like <laughs> if you know that that's how things are gonna be, like you can accept it or you can like try to stop it before it gets terrible. Yeah. Um, so that's what I try to do with my layers, because 200 layers later, um, I don't want to be looking for the one curves layer that oh. I need to change. Okay. I so feel you. this one is from a little bit different of an angle, this photo here, and a little bit closer, because again, I want to kind of establish that we're like down low, close to the water, and we're looking at something really far away. So I want to have this variation in the size of the lily pads here. And there is a little weird distortion on these plants and stuff over here, but I'm not really worried about it. Saving. 
quite neat Photoshop. <laughs> okay. so I think I want to kind of get rid of some of this water too so we can see through to that water layer underneath. Um, so I'm coming to the channels again. I just want to find the one with the most contrast between those lily pads and the water. Yeah, I think the red one. Again, make a copy, come to our levels. All right. And I'm going to dodge and burn directly on this copy of the channel, um, just with the dodge and burn tools here. I'm just going to make sure I'm dodging my highlights. Just allows a little more manual control than you get using just levels or curves. And then we'll swap to burn. We're going to do the same thing. We'll burn our shadows. And get this nice selection here. Yeah, channels is one of my favorite ways of masking. It's just it's like so good, such a good job. <laughs> I uh, I put a video on Instagram not that long ago about using uh, channels to mask hair, and there we go. I'm gonna bring some of that back, I think. And like someone left a comment, they're like, "Or you just use the select and mask tool?" And I was like, "Oh, not you again, you people uh, with your select and mask." Oh it's my god, not as good. I know, I know. Anytime I've made videos about channels, like someone always says something. I'm like, no, channels is still a great way to cut things out. And it makes like perfect, perfect selections. They do. I mean, it's just having that that manual control there makes so much difference. Yeah. And uh, also people will do one thing 10 hundred different ways. <laughs> like whatever works for you. It really doesn't matter if the end product comes out the way you want yeah 10 hundred i made up a new number <laughs> um carol said has have you saved recently carol yes. is save police so very good at reminding us to <laughs> make sure <laughs> i did i did but that would be what would happen to me is it'll crash and the whole thing will be gone i that know i know one more layer here and so these ones are much, much closer. And they're also kind of dirty and disgusting, which is exactly what I want. Um, so I want to feel as we kind of finish building out the environment itself that we have this glowing, beautiful, magical kind of kingdom here. And then things are getting more and more decayed as we move outwards. So having this kind of decayed, dying, whatever they are, lily pads, I think is gonna be what I want. We do some more of this quick dirty masking. We <laughs> Bryce also said selected mask hates me. Yeah, we agree, Bryce. <laughs> it's true. We should start a club. We'll have jackets. Yes. <laughs> and we can have like, I don't know, a West Side story dance off with people who use select mask. I love that. <laughs> we should make something like that. <laughs> a Photoshop play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of into this idea. I know we do. They're telling me a story, Anna. <laughs> oh, this would be so so good. We could have <laughs> all the different sides at, that people are on. Like, love this, hate this, love this, hate this. We could have a huge battle. Everyone has cool jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. I don't dance though. No, you'll, me you'll either. It would be simply just a talking, moving, fighting scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pull that down. Let me bring our reds up a little. And I think our water's pretty, pretty good. I might come in and refine this a little bit more, but I want to make sure we have time to get to the, the ground areas. Um, So one thing that's been kind of freeing too about moving into like concept design instead of just photography uh, is that 
I can be a little bit more like stylistically impressionistic, I guess. Like it doesn't have to be perfectly photo real because that's not the point. The point is that we get the idea across that we elicit a feeling. Mm. Water. I think we're pretty good. So we're gonna, I might come do something with these plants as we add this ground plane in. But let's start building some funky islands. So same thing, grab our selection here on our clown pass. And I'm gonna add that on mask real quick. Like, I feel like it's worth noting too, I'm really not using a lot of assets. Um, like, I definitely have been in the habit of like, you spend hours and hours looking at stock and you want to find the exact right thing. And it's just a waste of time. Uh, right. when you can really just work with multiple things and use them in multiple ways. Yeah. Do you have any advice on that? Because I know that that topic has come up a lot on these streams of spending time finding stock images. Um, that is, I mean, it's it's hard. I definitely like even just for this, I definitely spent a while <laughs> finding <laughs> the right stock. Um, I, I have definitely become a convert uh, to buying stock images um, and stock packs. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. Like a bunch of these are from Adobe Stock. Um, a couple of them are like pixabay um i have some stuff from photobash.org and those are pretty great not this one so i think just kind of like building out the sort of asset library for yourself is a great way to just kind of keep from getting sucked into the never-ending cesspool that is looking for stock images right when you need them because then yes. you can just know what you have and again reusing stuff um like especially if you're creating an environment like there's going to be repetition um of rhythm of color of like the kinds of plants and stuff like that so you don't need to go find 15 different pictures of the same kind of plant you can use the same one and just warp it or change the color or change you know where it is right and it's not going to hurt your image all right so more smart objects over here so we've got all these nice lush kind of cypress trees in the swamp going on, but I want to start bringing in those dead trees. I'm going to mask off the bottom a little bit again with that grass brush in the concept art pack. Um, make sure I'm actually masking with the right color. Just start brushing it away to kind of blend it in. So that first layer that we that part that we selected here. That's just kind of establishing the placement there, but then I'm building it up with this other tree piece. Now, both of these don't match at all. So I'm gonna add some more curves and we're gonna darken that, uh, that ground plane. We turn the tree off for a second. And yeah, Tom, Tom said, meanwhile, someone's trying to recreate this using AI. <laughs> I'm very pro. I actually almost was going to use some AI assets in this uh, just because I love AI. Um, and it, it is something is pretty I, awesome. It is. It's so utterly impressive. And I, I, I mean, I have a lot of strong opinions that I could go on a rant about. Um, but using it as a tool to just elevate your art. I think is fantastic. Um, and what's amazing about, you know, augmented intelligence like that is it makes connections um, without, you know, the flaws of like human memory, right? Like you're going to forget things or not know to look for things. And depending, right. yeah. And so like, depending what the computer's trained on, it's going to know what to look for. So if you're like, I want a dead cypress tree, you know, or whatever, it's going to give you all these variations of that because it knows exactly what that is. Or um, I want, a, you know, Rococo style throne. It's going to know exactly what that looks like without having to spend mm. hours doing research. That is so true. And what AI program are you using? Um, I've used a couple. Um, I've been using Art Breeder for a long time, uh, which is kind of like 
old school. It's not super impressive. It's not text-based like um, like mid journey and stuff that's kind of trending right now is, but I've used it a lot for like just faces for character design um, or, you know, like random background pieces and stuff like that. Right now I've been really into disco diffusion, uh, which is rad. It is text prompt based. Um, so, you know, you type in what you want and it thinks about it and does stuff for you, but it's still, it's really abstract. It's not super realistic. Um, and I think that allows, you know, again, that kind of like creative inspired moment of like looking at this and being like, oh yeah, this could be cool. I want to go do this with photos. Or I want to take, you know, a piece of this texture yeah. or part of this idea. Okay. Totally. So maybe yeah, I'll bring in some. Sam, Sam said he's trying mid journey. Do you know, like, is this may be a dumb question, but the only way to m use mid journey is through discord. Is that correct? Or as far as I know, I haven't used it a ton. Um, but yeah, you go in Discord um, and you type in the command to the bot and it uh, does stuff for you. Right. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing. Discord can be overwhelming, especially like with thousands of people, how many people are using it all at once? Like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying it out the other day and I mean, it works fine, but it's like, boop, 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 boop. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I just want to focus on myself right now and what's in my head. <laughs> I had the same the same feeling when I did try it. I was just like, how do I even find my images? Like, how do I find messages to me? I don't know. Yeah. Um, once you figure it out, though, and the the results are really honestly amazing. Like, so impressive. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of rim light here. Um, going into our layer properties on this tree, and this like works well on some stuff. Doesn't always work all other like on other stuff. Um, I'm gonna use inner shadow, and I'm setting the mode to color dodge because I like the way that that interacts with the colors on the layer itself. Um, I think that angle is kind of okay. This actually, you know, it's not a terrible approximation of rim light. Um, but if I want to touch it up, I'm going to right click on the layer and I'm going to come down here to create layer. I don't care. You're wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, it's going to replicate that, um, that layer effect on a new layer, which does look a little bit weird, but that's okay. So now I can move it around and I can adjust it or I can mask it off on certain places. I'm gonna turn down the fill a little bit so it's not quite so intense. Just bring in some color adjustments, and then I think this part is okay. Whoops, I know how to use Photoshop. <laughs> Do you find yourself doing that? Like, just like doing things wrong or like oh, getting all error messages time. over and over? All the time. And it's always when you're live, too. Like, I mean, it happens a lot when I'm just working on my own, but I don't notice it as much. And then when I'm live and it's something continues to give me errors. I'm like, oh my God, I swear I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I can't, the, the, you can't use the work tool, with the linked mask on smart object. And I do that every yeah. day, every Is day. Is that a new thing? Because that has been an issue for me a lot lately. I don't, I think it's not that new. It's like, it, Maybe. it seems like there's I don't know. For some reason, Photoshop's getting mad at me for doing that. And I feel like it never used to. It would just like warn me that it wasn't correct, but now it actually won't let me. Interesting. I mean, do you have like VIP access to the people who can tell you? Not really, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this is another thing. I don't know if anybody has any good workarounds for this, including yourself, Becca, but um, plugins no longer really work as well on the new version of Photoshop. You have to, like you have your plugins panel, but you can't get old plugins or like third party plugins. And so you have to open Photoshop in Rosetta, but then Photoshop lags really bad. Interesting. I don't really use a lot of plugins. Um, the one plugin that I absolutely love is the Nick plugin. And um, I have like the old version 
um, from when Google owned the company. I don't know. Anyway, but like it has not been working at all in the most recent updates. Um, mm. And I had to like go and like manually install it like through, I don't know, my actual computer, which I don't know anything about. Um, and so it kind of works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. And I can't, I can't figure out why. Yeah. Yeah. It's really frustrating. I don't know what. Yeah. Have to try to figure that out. I would like to file a complaint. I would like to file <laughs> All right. So I just brought in another tree and again, selected our thing here on our clown pass layer. And I just kind of worked it to sort of fit. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, just helping. Okay, I'm gonna bring that same tree that I just used. I'm gonna bring it in again. So again, more of this kind of contrast in the environment. Uh oh. I'm like waiting for the time buzzer to go off. <laughs> like you're too slow. Stop it. Okay. And I'm copying that mask off the bottom just to get kind of figure out where the end of that's supposed to be and then uh, mask off that part. I've got this weird little fringe here. But. I think it's okay. All right, so same thing. Let's match my light, match my color. And I like to kind of do like highlights and shadows sort of in reverse. Like I'll drag down all the way from the highlight to get these dark spots and then mask off where the highlight needs to be. And so just using like a soft brush is okay. I guess sometimes, but this is also a good opportunity to use those custom shaped brushes. Like we come in with the grass and mask off with the grass. It's going to create more natural looking highlights. Do you ever run into, um, issues with your composition and you have like an, an idea in your head, you start kind of planning it out, getting things in place, especially like when working with stock photos and everything. And then it just, it's like too busy and you can't quite get it to work. And if so, what do you do about it? What's your advice for that? Um, like it's, just, I mean, yeah, like sometimes, sometimes art's just not working and that sucks um but keep working at it keep working at it uh i mean yeah. i wouldn't say there's like a specific like this is the way uh because there's not there's not it's you know it's really dependent on the piece and what you want from the piece um right like i think it's very important to try to study um as much like art theory as you possibly can and listen to other artists talk and think about how they think um and focus more on how you creative and artistically think than just this is how to technically do the thing uh because technical skills are great but they're only going to get you so far they're not going to really teach you you know how to create effective composition they're not going to teach you uh how to understand the emotional impact of color um so all of that kind of like more psychological stuff, which sounds really boring, but it's really, really not, I promise, um, is going to do a lot for fixing those problems when you get stuck. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. the art just isn't working and you start over. That's true. But yeah, I was I was asking because like you're, it's, I mean, obviously you worked on this ahead of time for this live stream, but it just seems like the composition here is like really nice. You have a, a great, um, understanding of space and size and things relative to each other. So I'm always curious uh, to get people's advice on these streams to see what they think works best. Yeah, I mean, like there's a lot of like kind of like generic sort of rules. Um, I definitely have my own sort of preferences. Um, like here, if we look at a... Like I'm very partial to the golden spiral, which is going to come kind of down like this and right around here. Mm. 
And so I'm going to add in our little character in the end that we'll design tomorrow is going to be right about here. I'm going to be right on that point. Um, and this is also kind of a variation on the rule of thirds. Right, so our character would be here on this third. Our tip of our castle hits this point on those thirds right there, but it also then has this Fibonacci sequence kind of flow to it as well. Um, and I just kind of eyeball that at this point. Um, that's just kind of my, my personal preference in flow uh, for most things. But there's lots of ways. And, you know, of course, working things like threes, right? Like I've got three islands here, one, two, three, and kind of big, medium, small variation, but still similar in size and shape and feeling. Uh, and just learning to balance that, which yeah. takes practice. I mean, there's no way you're going to, you can't just read it and understand it. Like you have to actually go and do it. Yeah. Really good advice. Great. I try. I have to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Add an inner shadow again. That's horrible. Let's not do that. Um, maybe if we turn it less saturated, darker. That is super, super, super green. All right. Let's make that into another layer. I think it's okay for now. We'll bring some color back. All right, last, last little island. And then we'll bring in some atmosphere and some light. And then I think I can go back to sleep afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I forgot it's early for you out there. Oh, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Where are you located? Uh, I'm in New Jersey, so it is almost two o'clock for me. Oh, so you've probably been awake for a little bit longer than me. Not by much, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like to sleep in. I want the luxury of sleeping in, but uh, it doesn't happen as much as I would like. All right, so I'm just going to establish kind of the bottom of that plane, but I think I'm going to mess around with the shape a little bit more. But... Tree up. And so a lot of the stock I used here, I, I liked stuff that had the sort of dappled light to it already uh just because we're in the woods right there is going to be even though we hid a lot of that light uh there's still going to be that light coming through in random places in the in the leaves and stuff and well, not that and it just lets it feel more organic and less contrived so this one is not a smart object so it's gonna let me use a mask and warp at the same time just kidding. They're not linked. Mm -hmm. so again, these are these kind of composition rules where like echoing these same kind of shapes and the patterns, but still, you know, creating intentional lines to that focal point way out there. Right. Yeah, so maybe. maybe this is something that you don't really think about or care about, but um, <laughs> when you, when, you'll see why I say care about. Um, when you are creating uh, in this um, uh, ratio format, mm -hmm. what happens when you want to post it on Instagram? Um, I cry on the inside <laughs> and sometimes on the outside. Um, I have definitely just accepted that Instagram wants me to post stupid videos. Um, mm. And I, I don't know how old you are, but I'm a millennial and I feel like I'm turning into a boomer who doesn't know how to use technology. A hundred percent. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I mean, I, I've started to do maybe a few reels or think about it for my mm -hmm. um, Photoshop page, but I am just like, no, I have come here to share photo art and that's what I want to share no matter what. But I do feel like it uh restricts me to the size that i'm making things and i'm just like i'm very inspired by this format that you chose because it's making me think right now very outside of my little four by five box and so that's yeah. why i'm wondering like 
are you worried about posting this or sharing it or so what what i end up what i'll end up doing or what i've been doing a lot lately is um using like a like i'll, I'll do a scroll in a reel but mm. i hate that i'm even talking about this um so i'll just scroll <laughs> like this like i'll just kind of have it uh like pan mm, uh, okay yeah okay. and then i'll like i'll maybe do a close-up or close-up um and then kind of zoom out on the whole image um and actually, I, I totally stole that idea from um, a concept artist, Matt Painter, that I really like named Dylan Cole. And he does that on his Instagram because I, I had the same problem. I'm like, I don't want to. I'm not dancing. It's not going to happen. Um, and I want people to see my content. Yep. But I also want to post really wide dramatic content. So what do I do? So that was a case where I did go and look at, you know, other artists who do similar work and try to see what they're doing and if it's effective cool um also do like you know like where you um like you'll have the slides on a still image on instagram like i chop it up into into thirds mm, that's a good idea too yeah i'm gonna take some of your advice with this because i want to make different format art but uh i don't know where to share it then I mean, of course, there's other places too, right? Like you can share on Behance, you can share True. on ArtStation or, you know, on your website, on Facebook. Or um, I actually have a lot of good luck on Reddit of all places. Mm. Um, and I don't go into it with like a marketing, like, look at me, I'm the best um, kind of attitude. But it's just like, hey, I made a cool thing. And I find other people who like those things. So people who like fantasy or people who like mermaids or, you know, whatever it is that they happen to like. Um, and then find the appropriate like sub community to share in cool yeah that's a good idea too oh this is why it's not working mm -hmm. okay we're getting there oh home stretch <laughs> um i had a little rock and now i don't have a little rock um uh, let's go in here one thing I do have to really force myself to do with the layer organization is the color coding. Um, because even with many groups and stuff, what am I doing? Uh, not that art object. Um, I still like get lost. Uh, yeah. And so I have to like very intentionally remind myself to go and color code. And I try to just kind of like think of what's in the group. Like my trees are going to be green and the water's blue. Just in a way that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to anyone else as long as it makes sense to me, it kind of. Yeah, I mean, that's the important thing. Also, very cool collection of rocks. Where are those from? Those are from <laughs> uh, Photobash. Um, I, they have a lot of like pre-cut out stuff, which I appreciate. Um, same <laughs> I'm but I mean, just like, having, yeah like these collections of like not very specific um like environment wise stuff like this could be anywhere this could be on a beach this could be in the forest this could be on a mountainside like stuff that has reusability yeah those are really cool I like them do do I feel like a robot, like I'm just repeating the same process over and over. Sorry. That's totally fine. It's cool to see it. I'm just coming out with a texture brush here to clean off that highlight. Nope, don't like that. Are we done yet? <laughs> Almost. 
Almost. <laughs> Almost. I want to darken up these uh these shadows over here. Um, so I didn't put in all my atmosphere layers, so we'll go ahead and we'll we'll do that. But the closer we get kind of to our camera, the the more mm. contrast there's going to be here, uh, just because it's not being impacted by the volume in the air and the atmosphere in the air. Uh, it is looking so, so good already. I'm just like in awe. <laughs> Thank you. I was definitely like in a panic, like, what do I make? How do I... How do I turn it on on demand? But figured it out. Like yeah. Kind of finding the story that I, I wanted to explore here. Why are we not working? It's so cool because there's so many, you're offering so many good little snippets of advice and like the way you're compositing. I mean, I've been compositing now for like 10 years and I've learned so much from you today. Really? Yeah, like little touches the... of things that I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. Or like just even the way you're you're composing your image and putting everything together, the way you're doing light. Like I think I say this every time, but that's the beauty of these streams is no matter where someone is in their art journey, you can always learn something. Totally, totally. And like those 10,000 approaches, right? Like everyone yep. is going to have a different <laughs> way to do things. And maybe there's a way that's faster or maybe there's a way that makes more sense. And you just didn't know, like, we're never going to know what we don't know, right? Because we don't always know what we need to know. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so we have to go and figure it out. Um, so I'm going to go, let's paint some color in here too. I want to have, uh, these are some more, I think, from DeviantArt brushes, but these are same concept as the Kyle brushes, just like random leaf scattered. And there are brush settings in here. Um, change, so we're mixing those foreground and those background colors. Let me lay down the brush. Oh, a little too bright. That's like an example of like, it doesn't need, these are not flowers. These are blobs, but mm. it creates the same impact, right? And it, not over there. You know that differentiation in organic colors. We're not going to have a lot of flat colors in nature. I don't like the color of this highlight over here, but well. I'm gonna drop in some more. So in that background layer, right, we had these kind of solid fill atmosphere layers. And I'm gonna just kind of stack some more of these in here. So too much. I'm just keeping kind of low fill and then masking off. Or I don't want it. So in those uh, the original render passes, right? We have this uh, this mist layer, which is this like approximation of depth. Um, so mm. what I'll often end up doing, actually, I can do it right now. So I'll just select it. Um, it's just it's a white layer with a transparency. Um, and then if I throw that down here on a mask. Then that mask is going to kind of follow that sense of depth uh, and only put the color oh, cool. in a natural way. We can actually just replicate that and we'll bring it um, in front of over here. But these layers to kind of mess with my mask a little bit. You can see almost like it's moving across the space. And it's got some weird banding, but I don't care. 
Now the one thing here, since we did build up these little islands, it's catching that edge there, which is no bueno. So we'll just kind of... Want to add a little bit more of that warmth to uh, behind this tree. So this is down here. Mm. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to clear that from the highlights again. Up there, the hideous orange light. Gross. <laughs> so these tend to be like my three favorite options for blending modes when it comes to light. Um, light and for obvious reasons. Uh, screen can work well depending on what you're doing. And color dodge generally for painting like highlights on surfaces. Um, I will use it for glow sometimes too. But this. Me too. I think screen will do, but I'm going to desaturate that color. It's not quite so horrific. This is also why I like using color fill instead of a brush like I'm doing right now. Then I can just go in and change the color instead of having to undo and undo and choose a color. Yeah, that was a genius move. That's very smart. Trying to just see. So it's the the color fill. You have a layer on top of it um, for the glow. And yeah, that was the change... orange. Okay, okay. And but you're say, able to then like... change the color underneath. Mm -hmm. So like, okay. say if I wanted to change the feel of this, right? And I, wanted, I didn't want it, the atmosphere to feel green. Um, I could just come in and now we have cooler atmosphere we can take it warmer mm, thanks mask up a little bit here as well just layers on layers on layers um and there's something still this is kind of like i get when i'm working like i'll kind of go through the process like i get most of it out and we're good and then i go in and i spend like hours just working on the little itty bitty fine details um which i'm trying to refrain from doing right now <laughs> like uh, the shadows on the castle back here are bothering me there we go just like that It'll be a little better And save so I don't lose everything. Yes. Okay. I think I want to add a little bit more kind of glowy diffusion everywhere. Um, so I'm going to come back to my channels again. And I just really want to select the highlights. So I'll make a copy of the blue layer or blue channel rather. And we'll just crunch those blacks so we just have the highlights left. Okay. Let's see that. New layer. Shift F5 for fill. Fill it white. Let's make that a soft light. And we're just going to blur it. Mm -hmm. Let's soften up those highlights a little bit more. Wow, yeah, that's really nice. I saw I saw um you explaining that on your blog a little bit and I was like, this oh. is cool. I want to see this in real life. So very awesome technique. So I'm glad that I've have been stalked. Yeah. Uh, it's proved useful. <laughs> Gotta see who I'm gonna be working with. <laughs> I'm a weirdo, man. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit more light too. Uh where are my yeah, atmosphere brushes. 
So I love these brushes. I don't remember the person's name, Gab Train. I don't know who you are, Gab Train, but I love your brushes a lot. Um, and there's, you know, we're going to make some rays of light here. Mm. Not like that. Or maybe we're not going to make some rays of light and I'm going to get frustrated and change my mind. <laughs> Kind of god rays in general they can be really tricky because they they're really dependent on the objects in the scene right like they're gonna cut out like this castle is gonna block out where the light goes like down here there's nowhere for that light to be coming from so it wouldn't actually be there i guess maybe a smarter way would be to do them manually Which you could kind of even do like how we just did with that glow, you know, with selecting the highlights and then blurring them. You could probably use like a like a motion blur or something um, to create that like lengthening of the highlights. Um, I haven't had the best luck with it that way, but it is an option. Mm. And I like to keep again like them on this normal mode because the light has substance to it or rather whatever it's catching in the atmosphere is substance to it and so it's not just going to be you know lightning things that's actually physical objects um let's do one more Maybe like this whoa that is the right color A little more warmth up here again. Select me. Let's, let's try a color dodge layer with some orange and see how we feel about that. Okay, don't hate it. Maybe hate it a little. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Some last finishing touches here. These little plants are cut off down here just based on our masking not into that but that's okay um so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make a just a new layer here we're gonna make your plants i can spell and we're gonna use the clone stamp with those cool nature brushes so i'm gonna use this one that looks kind of like some grass and i'm just gonna kind of sample randomly. We're painting some grass in here. And you're just painting yep. on a fresh layer, right? Yep, just a plain cool. blank layer. I'll use this one actually because it has some scatter to it. And again, don't need to go find new stock images for this. It is not necessary. And just a little. Ah! <laughs> oh, but... I think the last thing I really wanted to do is I want to put a reflection in the water. Um, I'm just gonna 
without those lights on. So uh, I don't know what it is on Mac, but control, control, shift, alt, D. Make a merged copy of our whole thing. And we're gonna turn this to screen. Flip it, same down. And we're gonna more blend if I have an addiction and <laughs> I need a support group. Bring this. I might need to actually move this layer. I'll see. But we're gonna pull it so it's not on the highlights. I really only want it to show in the shadows. Yeah, so I think my atmosphere layers are interfering with this right now. So if I come down, bring it down by the water. There's actually like not a lot of the water surface showing. Um, in that kind of mock up I did last night, there was a lot more there where you could see this a little bit better. Maybe if we hitting the wrong brush button. <laughs> Water. Some of those lily pads a little. I'm very intrigued right now. I find reflections to be so difficult sometimes. They are. So like even if we if we turn off our lily pads completely, right? Um what is that? Oh. Like it should actually line up pretty well here. Maybe that's why I'm not liking it. Um and we can even look at like this example on the mood board, right? The water's still and so it's almost mm. this perfect kind of mirror image, but it's not really going to show up on anywhere that's like really anywhere on the water that's reflecting light a lot already, like anywhere that has these really bright highlights or of course anywhere that has plants on it. Um, so it's pretty easy on still water to kind of create that, like you don't really need like a, you could do like, I don't know, like a displacement map or something if you want to make the ripples, but with something still like this, you don't really need it. I don't know why it is not cooperating for me right now. This is the kind of thing that I would like. I'm gonna sit here for half an hour afterwards and be like, "What did I do different?" How yeah, did I make it perfect. It's. I definitely seem to have that issue too with um, doing blend if sometimes, and then it getting a little funky, like the way it is for you right there. And I, I never know why. Yeah, I guess mm. I'm, I'm just playing at this point. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. All right, I'm just gonna turn the, the layer down. So it's, it's subtle anyway, since we can't see a lot of that water surface, we're not gonna see a lot of reflection in it anyway. Okay. Cool. Are we done now? Oh, we take a nap we, now <laughs> we have uh, about six minutes left. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I'm going to just change I think I want a little more green right here in the water. And then I do have kind of like the biggest hack in the world um, that we can we can look at also. I'm just going to use, I think, a, a color layer. Mm. I 
super subtle more green in those lily pads so you're just uh on a clipped layer painting with your water brush right yeah this was actually okay. that was just big soft brush just to bring in a little bit just a color on that background layer mm. okay Whoa. Cool. All right, well, I guess we can take a look at the biggest faker hack in the entire world. Um, just because this has been like my most life changing discovery in Photoshop, um, like recently. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a copy of everything, just flat and copy of everything. And we are gonna look at the art history brush. Have you ever used this? Um, I haven't used it in the way I think you might be about to, but it's the best. It's the best. So it's just this random little tool over here that I have found that a lot of people have never heard of. I'd never even like, I knew it was there. I didn't know what it did. Um, I'm gonna go pick a, a brush here. Uh, so what it does is it samples information from your history. So you have to come in and you click here as the source of your information at your latest point in your history. And you take your art history brush and you paint over your layer. Real close. And it's just going to distort wow. the layer with whatever your brush texture is. Um, so everyone thinks that it's a digital painting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, oh yeah, I'm moving the, the brush. It's kind of like painting. <laughs> um, God, I'm just like, I can't, like so mind blown about this tool. And um, I've kind of developed a technique now uh, for bringing in like actual three-dimensional paint texture, um, not just, you know, the Photoshop version of texture. Uh, so I think I'm probably gonna make a tutorial on that pretty soon, but Ah, wow. Mind blown, mind blown. Well, now it's a giant mess. Um, so what do we do with this giant mess? So kind of what I like to do, and also like depending on the brush you use, um, you can get like really different effects. So if you use something that's like based off physical texture, you're gonna get this really nice texture. Um, but what I'll do, so this is its own layer or paint layer. And this is our just flattened layer. I'm going to copy this. I am going to come to our filters. I'm going to make a high pass filter. Just enough to kind of see this detail here. And we're going to set that to linear light. We're going to drag that over our paint layer. All right, so I want, I want kind of crazy right here. Maybe too crazy. <laughs> um, you know, change the, the fill or the opacity or mask parts off or, you know, do a neater job painting than I did. Um, but then it saves some of that original texture through the high pass layer from the original image to bring some of that sharpness. Wow. Back in here. Uh, so I probably actually, let's just do a better job real quick. Um, so I'd probably go really like this is definitely something I more often use my tablet for just so I can brush back and forth um, just so it's subtle and it's not overkill well good way also like a good way to hide all your sins um, yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> so there we go now we have this kind of like painterly texture I can turn that light group back on a little bit maybe add what about color in here too let's do a a gradient um not that color though you know we've got our nice kind of greeny yellows maybe we want some some of that warmth so in our kind of sample image on the mood board we had some some warmth in the shadows too and we'll do uh Wow. Just 
just in the shadows there. This is so crazy. I cannot believe how much you transformed this image. <laughs> Woo! All right. Wow. So we could even, I mean, depending, again, like going back to that, you know, what, what are their creative reasons that you're making the decisions you're making, right? So if we want to change this, like, really blue in our shadows, it's going to feel pretty different. Um, why is this being so weird? I think I broke my gradient layer. What did I do? Well, ah. Be Becca, I hate to say um, we have to wrap yeah. it up, but this has been absolutely incredible. I have learned so much from you. I hope everyone else has as well. Don't forget, you can always watch this replay at any time, and we will be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time for part two, where she will be diving into creature design, utilizing the liquify tool to manipulate photos and morph them into humanoid creatures. I am super excited for that. It's going to be great. Um, be sure to tune in to our creative boot camp with weekend creative coming up after this and a few other good goodies in store for you right after and uh, we will see you tomorrow bye bye thank you so much